All right, so now let's go to the lower extremity nerve injuries. We're going to first start with the obturator nerve, which is not pictured, but I've kindly drawn in in the red. And the key thing is that it's in the medial side of the thigh. Uh, this can be damaged by pelvic injury. And again, the key is the medial thigh. And it is function is from um, thigh a adduction to adduction. So that's moving the thigh medially. And it's also responsible for medial thigh sensation. So again, um, the obturator nerve, when damaged, will cause difficulty moving the thigh medially and medial thigh sensation. Super easy. Next is the femoral nerve. Again, not pictured, but can be caused uh, damage by pelvic fracture or something compressing this nerve. And deficit will be problems with thigh flexion and leg extension. Now, I always had difficulty remembering this because it's super easy to get confused. Like, what was it? Thigh flexion, thigh extension, leg flexion, leg extension. But now I have a solution for all of you, so you'll never forget. Um, let me give me a second. This is femoral nerve. What we're going to do is we're going to draw a little head. This guy, hi. Um, so that's his body, this is his arm, and this is his leg, and this right here is his thigh. So that is his hip, and his thigh, his, he is in thigh flexion. And we're going to draw on his knee, that's his knee, and his knee is an extension, it's extended. So that's the function of the femoral nerve. Hope you never forget it now. So remember, just draw out that big F. Next is the common perineal nerve, aka the fibular nerve. And actually, this fibular nerve tells you a lot. This fibular word tells you a lot. Um, fibula runs along the lateral part of the leg, and the common perineal nerve branches off the side nerve. It goes out laterally. So that's where you get injury. You can get injury by compression or injury to the lateral side of the leg. Other thing that can happen is you get a fibular neck fraction here, and that can also damage the common perineal nerve. And next is deficits, which is beautifully explained by this mnemonic PEDD. Uh, that's foot eversion, and you get foot dorsiflexion. You lost loss of the dorsiflexion. So dorsiflexion brings your foot up. So if you lose that, you can get a foot drop. And finally, you get loss of sensation in the dorsum of the foot. Um, again, just remember the fibula. So remember, there's a tibia and there's a fibula. So we've talked about the fibular nerve. Next is the tibial nerve. This is the complete opposite of the f um, common perineal nerve, aka the fibular nerve. So you pretty much can deduce everything by knowing the common perineal. Um, this one is the same branch, but it's on the back of the knee, so you can get knee trauma, or something called a Baker cyst, which is a cyst at the back of the knee. And you already know all the functions. It's the opposite of that P E D D. Okay, so that's eversions. Opposite is inversion. So you lose foot inversion with a tibial nerve damage. Um, dorsiflexion. If we're, um, opposite is plantar flexion, so you lose plantar flexion. Finally, you get uh, opposite of dorsum of the foot is base of the foot. Um, so you lose all of that. So you can memorize. You can use a mnemonic tip for this. But honestly, it's super easy. Um, to remember, um, just it's the opposite of the common perineal nerve. Next is the superior gluteal nerve, which, as you remember, innervates the gluteus medius and minimus. And remember that the inferior gluteal nerve will innervate the gluteus maximus. And this can get injured by intramuscular injection to the superior medial region of the buttocks. So the superior medial. So a uh, brief side side note, the way you, do, you don't do that, the way to not give someone this injury is you inject them in the superior lateral region of their butt. So that's just some practical advice for you, which you might get tested on. And if you do mess up and injure this patient, you're gonna get the, they're going to get something called Trendelenburg gait. It's a high yield, high yield phrase. So let's say you injure this hip. This hip is responsible for stabilization of your pelvis, I mean this muscle. And it's going to stabilize the opposite side of your pelvis while you're weight bearing. So if you lose it, then you're going to get a pelvic tilt because you lose that stabilization. And on the right is what would normally happen um, when you have stabilized. Finally, we have the inferior gluteal nerve. This can get damaged by a posterior hip dislocation. And when it's injured, you get a decreased thigh extension. Again, impossible to remember. Is it thigh extension, thigh flexion? I forget. Um easy way to remember is inferior we're gonna 
draw out our friend again. Hello. But this time, this is his hip. His thigh is extended. So if you get damaged to the inferior gluteal nerve, you lose, you have decreased thigh extension. Okay, so that's it for our lower extremity nerves. If you are confident, you can just skip right ahead. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to do a brief test and a brief overview. Um, I'm going to show all of them on the same page. So the obturator nerve, remember, where was that located? Remember, that's the medial of the thigh, and that tells you everything. So um, deficits with injury include poor thigh, uh, a medial adduction of the thigh, as well as thigh sensation. That can be damaged with pelvic surgery. Next nerve is the femoral nerve. Um, which can be damaged by a uh, pelvic fracture, I believe. Yes, pelvic fracture. And deficits, remember, just remember that big F. Oh. Apologies. Remember the big F. Apologies, having technical difficulties here with the iPad. Big F. So, uh, pelvic fracture, deficit injury, when you lose thigh flexion and knee extension. Okay, next is the common perineal nerve. Remember the key word here was the fibula. So, fibula, it's um, how do you get injured again then? Then remember, it was that lateral injur injury to the, to the leg, lateral injury or fibular neck fracture. And what was the deficits? Remember that mnemonic? Mnemonic was... P, let's do it over here, P, E, D, D. So foot eversion, dorsiflexion, and dorsum of the foot sensation. Next is the tibial nerve. The tibial nerve is at the back of the knee. So in knee injury or a Baker cyst right here. At the back, again, at the back of the knee. Remember, function was just complete opposite of the P, E, D, D. So inversion, foot inversion, loss of foot plantar flexion, and loss of base of the foot sensation. Next, we have the injury to the superior gluteal nerve. Uh, how did we damage that again? Oh, remember, that was our fault. That was when we injected into the superior medial side. So how do we prevent that? What do we have to inject? Inject into the superior lateral side. And if you do mess up, what's going to happen? Remember, that patient's going to get Trendelenburg gait. Um, they're going to get a contralateral pelvic tilt because that affected weight-bearing hip will not be able to maintain stability. Finally, we have the inferior gluteal nerve, which can be injured by a uh, posterior hip dislocation. Remember that you're going to lose some thigh extension. So thigh extension means you have trouble getting up from a seated position. Remember that big eye, so that this is the thigh, thigh extension. So that is it for our lower extremity nerves.